Hey guys, I am sick as a dog, but I'm not letting that stop me. I've been wanting to do live streaming for a while. This is those first reps. So I didn't want to already not have a night where I didn't do it, which FYI, last night I did do one. I actually did it on the other channel, the Bravo Hood channel, which I linked to in the description below here. So I'm going to be playing around with this one. This is the main one. This is the one I have most subscribers on. But eventually in the near future, I'm going to try to go to the Bravo Hood one for all the dating life advice and the EDC expert for all the tactical stuff. So EDC, everyday carry. So if you want to make sure you don't miss out on those things, down below, there's the links. Subscribe to both those channels. And like I said, I'm going to try to, to, to focus on top, those specific topics for each one so the guys get what they want from these. So quickly tonight, I got a question. One of the one of the top things ever talked about, brought up that went mainstream from the game is the, the concept called nags. So I'm gonna read the question and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on nags. So hey bravo, what are your thoughts on nags? I understand the psychology behind them, but I rarely ever use them. I'm very good at showing a lack of interest until the time is right in DQing, disqualifying but I've never personally been a huge fan of having to use nags on girls. What are your thoughts? So nags. Mystery actually commented on my Facebook page years ago. Um, uh, I think I still have it bookmarked because I was like, oh, that's cool. He actually defined it. But he specifically said the reaction from a nag is laughter. So if that's the case, that's not what you're not knocking someone down a few pegs so going off of what he said which he posted that on my facebook page we were discussing it some other dating coaches were responding and eric came in and and responded and that's it right there from the horse's mouth so if a nag results in laughter then is it really something where you're knocking people down pegs so it, it, it can't be then <clears throat> with that said i also remember there's an old video of neil years ago and I looked for it a while ago. I can't find it anymore. If anyone finds it, let me know. He was on like a Dutch TV show or a German show or something. And they actually asked him to like, oh, hey, we're at a club. How would you hit on us? Which is always one of the most awkward, weird things. And it's horrible to do. You, you fall into their frame. It's just so weird. You're a dancing monkey. And yeah, so he actually did it. Later on, I think he uh, knew not to do that. And then he had that good line on this channel with Jimmy Kimmel where he's like, oh, I don't have a talk show game. <clears throat> so that was pretty smart. And then later he ended up working some of the routines and Jessica Alba really liked it. So huge credit on that one because that was that was crazy. I remember telling him how great that was. And uh, anyways, yeah, we all agreed it was awesome. But some of the other guys on other TV shows and the dating show, the, re the blind date show and stuff, some of them, I remember watching all those when they came out and I, I never – was really impressed with any of it. I thought it was kind of cheesy and kind of made a lot of the stuff look bad. But anyways, Negs, he was on that show. And when they were doing this whole awkward thing, he specifically said like, oh, I would just nag you a few times, like knock you down, knock you down a few pegs, drop something like that. So anyways, is there a rebranding or a, a new definition of what nagging is? I don't know. I don't care. The, the thing... I remember about it is like when we were first hearing about it, it was uh, if a girl tells you she's like a model and you're like, Oh, like a hand model. That's like the, the cliche total typical line. Like that's been used lots of times. And I think even on video, uh, Neil did that where he's like, Oh, like a hand model. So that's even weird. I never, I don't think it ever got the point across. So really from what I understand, like nags were just to convey that the woman's beauty isn't like hypnotizing you and you aren't going gaga over it, you aren't going crazy over it. So she tells you something crazy about how hot she is, how she modeled, something like that, like something really cool, high level, whatever. I said crazy a second ago, but something like really that would blow most people away and you act like non-reactive or you make a joke about it. That's kind of the way I always took it. And from what I've seen, that's how... That's how um, it was played. I, I never did any of that, though, because to me, I'm just I always am doing like playful banter and joking around and having fun. And the other thing is. <clears throat> I think a lot of this stuff. 
like like an example of never i remember being told never use self-deprecating humor ever 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 and i remember when i when i I think that was in the game and then when i read it and then later heard it i was like wait that's weird like i use it all the time and it's great like i love it it's one of my favorite things i'm always joking like that and so when someone like i've met some really amazing people in my life i've trained with epic people i'm friends with epic people um i've dated like amazing women high level high caliber like i like being around really outstanding high level people and so to me when i meet someone and they're telling me about those kind of things like if someone tells me something awesome then i'm like happy about it i think it's cool i'm interested and i think the biggest reason is because maybe I can relate and I've done some dope shit. And so like we both kind of respect each other. They've done some cool shit and I'm genuinely curious and want to know more. And then later they hear my, some of my stories and they ask me some questions. So I think that's maybe why it never was an issue or something I ever even thought about. I, I remember I tried Negan once. There's a story. I think I posted it up a little bit ago with I went out with my wing the very first time. And then I told the girl she had the eye booger. It was a horrible, I'll tell a story another time. It was a horrible first set. It was just so cringe. It's a hilarious story now. But I said, oh, you have an eye booger. And then she turned to her friend and she was like, do I? And her friend goes, no. So then like, I'm a liar. So after that, I just never, ever did one again. So if I don't think something's cool, if I think something's lame, or if I think something's like, they're trying to impress me and they say something, but it doesn't impress me. Like, I'm just honest about it. If they tell me something awesome, like, I think it's awesome, I'll, I'll tell them that's awesome. And it doesn't have to be something like the girl's a model. Like, there's a girl who's, like, a school teacher. And I'm like, wow, that's something I could never do. Like, I could never, you guys don't get paid enough. That job, it's, like, thankless and dealing with all those kids. Like, I could never do that. That's that's amazing that you're a teacher. That's, like, the world needs amazing teachers. I had some cool teachers. Like, that's awesome. So someone tells me that they're a nurse or a doctor or a neurosurgeon or something. I'm like, well, that's amazing. That's like so cool. So I either have genuine interest and like admiration and like, I don't want to say validation because I don't really want to think about validating them, but maybe it might seem like that. So either that, or I'm like kind of like 50, 50, I'm like, eh, on it. Or it might be something they're like, Oh, I'm a, I'm a big shot. A fundraiser for an anti-gun group and i'm like the ceo of like some anti-gun group and i'm like oh well i hate you then because i'm a gun guy like so that wouldn't be a nag that would be how i really feel right so and you can feel the opposite way it's fine um i think you're wrong but no it's fine you can you're allowed to have feelings and you're allowed to so I, th- I think the big thing is going back to what i mentioned earlier about like the self-deprecating humor I used it. I, I kill with it. I think it's hilarious. It's worked amazing. And then I stopped using it for a while. And then I realized later, oh, wait, you shouldn't use it. The guys, when they, there's a chance, I was on a boot camp and I told a girl, a student told a girl that he was gay. And she's like, okay, like, good for you. And like, you shouldn't be telling people about their sexuality, your sexuality that you just met. Well, it was like real awkward and weird. And then later he brought me over. And then I joked that I was gay too, because that was, there's a whole long story about the boot camp. It wasn't my call, but that was the cover story before I had a little more freedom to, to roll how I wanted to. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to take what they, what they say and, and make it great. The very first one I uh, was hired for. And then I went up and said it and the girl laughs and she's like, no, there's no way you're gay. And I'm like, yeah, I am like, like girls, I use the terms for down there. I'm like, those are yucky. And I'm like, I hate them. I love guys. And she's laughing and she's like, there's no way you're gay. So like some of the dating coaches out there who come off as gay, like don't try to use that to your advantage because you just come off as gay. If you're like weak and shy, like don't don't tell a girl that you're a virgin is a joke. I joked about that all the time. That like I've never kissed a girl. I was an altar boy growing up. I'm waiting until I'm married and girls would laugh and stuff. So self-deprecating humor, don't use it if there's a chance they might think it's true but it works if they know it's not true, right? So it's the same thing I think with nagging is guys who don't have cool shit going on in their life and aren't good at this stuff, like 
then that, then I think it might go to that old version of knocking her down a few pegs, which then is a horrible, evil, dark-sided, like, tactic, right? And then if that works on someone, then that's not a good start to a relationship. And if that's what you have to do to get interest and attraction in you, I mean, that's a huge red flag because you shouldn't need to do that to anyone to get them to like you. Like, you should just be awesome. Instead of the mindset of me chasing butterflies, I'm a bright light and I attract moths. Like, I should just be able to be awesome and attract women. And if you're not yet, then that right there tells you everything you need to know. You need to level up. So that's my take on nigs. I've heard it said one way on the TV show years before. Mystery said it on the Facebook page, which I have no reason to doubt it. And I think that's how they kind of play with it. And again, if you deliver it right, like even if you're kind of busting someone's balls, then they will laugh and it'll be funny because it's something's funny. It's funny. And that was another coach too, where he's like, it just kind of shows uh, disinterest. You're like just disqualifying, but you're like doing it like in a jokey ball busting manner, which then to me, that kind of makes more sense because I love busting balls, but it's uh, again, if I don't think something's cool, then I don't think it's cool. And if I think if I'm indifferent to it, I'm indifferent. And if I think something's awesome, like I'm not going to pretend I don't think it's awesome. Like I'm not going to lose my shit over it, but I'm going to, I'm going to recognize that it's cool. And I think that's why my take on this stuff is different. So yeah, I never, there were so many openers I read back in the day and I just was like, this is horrible. This is cheesy. I'll never do this. Oh, this one's worse. Carry around a bag, a prop bag, carry around a bag full of lint. Like I hated all that stuff when I read it first. The key though, is I think I read it and I understood like the formula behind it. And so then that's when I was able just to go out and start making my own openers and calling kind of following the structure. But even then that's, that's like someone else's comedy set list or that's someone else's music or that's like someone else's story. Like I don't want to be a cover band. So I kind of understood it. And then it helped me like, it's almost like taking like music classes or improv or comedy classes and then learning your own style of comedy and then, or music. And then you do that and you do your thing. And I think that's the way it should be because then I'm never wearing a mask. The mask never has to come off, which it always, if you're wearing one, it eventually does. But I don't have to worry about it coming off because I'm me. I'm unapologetically me. And people either love me or they hate me. And that's fine. Because there's so many people in the world, I don't have time for too many of them. I already have more than, than enough people in my life. I'm trying to cut out a few. So, yeah, it's uh, it's no problem if you're um, a little polarizing. So, I think lastly... If you're a guy who's chasing P and you got to remember too, that like bragging about getting laid was cool when you're in high school in the locker room with other guys who aren't getting laid. Like then when you would brag about it, like it was cool because no one else is getting it. But once you're an adult and like, once you're a normal whatever percentage do that like is just living a good decent life like you're getting laid so then to talk about it is like weird because that's not really what men do boys do teenagers young adults guys who are all in like sex is a huge priority in their life like they talk about it but like all the all the squared away badass dudes i know like don't talk about that stuff they might talk about a new girl they met that they're happy and it's cool that they met her, but they're excited about it, but they're not like talking about specifics and all that. So you also have to remember like bragging about getting laid is only cool to guys who aren't getting laid. So a lot of this stuff is like you're in that bubble guys who don't have social skills, guys who aren't getting laid guys who don't know how to communicate guys who are just scared to go up and say hi to a girl. Like if you're just in that, that pond, then a lot of this stuff I think works for those guys. But once you get out of that and get into like the real world and real dating, then like that isn't, that isn't part of it. I will say one of the best books I ever read was um, way of the superior man. I didn't read it till I think a couple years ago, but I had it for years. I will say years ago, if I would have read it, it wouldn't have, wouldn't have made sense. It wouldn't have resonated with me because I wasn't ready for it yet. So that's another thing is you got, I understand when I'm coaching guys, some guys might be here, but other guys might be down here 
and like just going out and approaching and user routines is what they need because you need to get up to this point. But if you're if you're to the point where you're actually out having cool relationships, cool girls, potential long term, very long term partners, like that would be something I would uh, I would highly recommend. And that's something that like I've never heard like PUA guys ever talk about. It was always about getting the girl, but not keeping or being awesome with the girl. So on that, I'm gonna call it a night. If you dug this, let me know. Last night's video was on the Bravo Hood page. I just wanted to put one up there also to like put some live streams up. I'm gonna be um, out in a couple days. I got a trip coming up, so I won't be live streaming. Maybe I'll do something from my phone. We'll see how it goes on on the road. Maybe I'll do it just for fun, just to keep it going. Um, but uh, I'm gonna be at a wedding and stuff, so I'll, I got to see what the schedule is and all that. But I wanted to hit it for a week and then um, take a little step back, reassess some stuff, fix things up update the page i'm looking at different software like obs and things to like stream better i don't know if i'm gonna stick on youtube so twitch rumble um tiktok live instagram i don't know i gotta look at all those facebook so if you guys have any feedback or insight i'd love uh i'd love you to dm me and let me know and um yeah i'm gonna take a step back figure out a game plan a little bit and then uh, start doing another push and seeing how it goes. So if you don't see me in a little bit, that's why, but I'll definitely be back and let you know what's going on. Good night guys. I'm going to take some NyQuil later. <laughs>